This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving, GoDaddy, and Netflix. You know how you can tell we're doing a voicemail show? How? We don't bother wearing pants. No pants! We're just, we're just, uh, he covers up. That's I'm a good holding, move. Hold them tight. That's, that's nice. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> he doesn't, he has, he has horrible legs. He, he won't wear shorts. They're very skinny, they're like sticks. <laughs> <laughs> but hairy. They're very skinny and very, very okay, hairy. Ruth. We can't use any of this. <laughs> Book discussion show from the website ifanboy.com. My name is Connor. I'm here with Josh. And, and I'm Ron. <laughs> the voice mailbox has been overflowing Overflow. with responses. Um, we've mentioned in previous shows we have a lovely voicemail line at 1888fanboys. That's 1888-326-2697. Um, and a lot of you like to call in. Um, we, we answer some of them on our weekly audio show. Yeah, shows usually where they go, but we like to do a show here sometimes when they pile up. Yep. So um, the usual voicemail disclaimer, we have not listened to these. We're going completely... Well, he yeah. checked them to make sure there was no yeah, filled yes. uh, screeds. But there's no preparation. We're Josh going cold. Blind. Blind, all right? Which isn't much this different. This is going to be interesting. So here comes our first one. Uh-oh. Hey, FN boys. This is Matt from Simi Valley, California. Um, I was bouncing some ideas around in my head um, about a you know, serialized story, something in comic book format, um, about... Uh, the protagonist growing up from a child into an adult. And I was wondering, are there any, are there any series that you would recommend that handles, you know, the growth of the hero, you know, really well, that handles, you know, the growth, you know, whether it's from teenage to, you know, being elderly or, you know, childhood to adulthood, whatever it may be. Can you recommend any stories that handles that kind of growth really well? Um, I'd really appreciate if you could throw something out there. Uh, keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. And yeah, we'll talk to you later. Bye. I like how he was knocking some ideas around in his head. Like he, like uh, no, honestly, I never really approach it. Like I want a story about this. Like I never really think about it that way. No, I, yeah. I tend not to yeah. either. Which is that's interesting. Does um, it has to be really well, or can it be at all? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, for this kind of thing, you take what you can. Well, no, actually, um, I, it's it might be hard to piece them together, but I think if he took some of the various Daredevil stories. Um, like Daredevil Yellow and Daredevil Born Again and Daredevil like all the, all those um, ones that focus on his relationship with his father and uh, the, to the, the point accent. where he becomes a, just a broken man he is yeah, exactly no I mean I think Daredevil is a story that started when he was a kid and when the accident happened yeah, leading up to w- what he is now there's it, no kind of linear story though, well, no, there, like childhood too because they don't really need to focus on anything until the I the can't think of a story, story. Well, I'm thinking think, like st- I mean I think I he's thinking like Star Wars or Ender's Game where we follow the protagonist from yeah. you know mm-hmm. From not being a hero to becoming a hero, to being you know? thousands of years old. Yeah. Uh, there's not going to be a story that I can, that we can think of. I don't think there will be. You know, I think Stars was kind of like that because they started off as kids, but you, yeah. get, you, you only get like one or two pages, and then they're heroes because that's but, where the story is. But there are characters. I think that you can follow. Like uh, characters, a lot of the sidekicks have gone from being kids. So point, you've yeah. got we've got Dick Grayson, Nightwing. Nightwing, uh, you've yeah. got Wally West, you've yeah. got uh, yeah. Roy uh, Harper, Harper yeah. uh, Speedy or Arsenal, yeah. um, <laughs> who went through a lot of trials. I mean, and, and there's Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, nice. Spider-Man. Uh, and while there was a bit of a reboot on that, and. And not not to always. I mean, and it's over forty years, but I mean, a lot of the X Men start off as kids. I mean, yeah. we watch yeah. we watch you know all the original five Kitty come Pride. out as Kitty Pride, Rogue. I mean, like they all they have grown. The X Men start as teenagers now. They're yeah. whatever they. However, age. that's a good deal of work to go yeah. back and read. Every there's issue not going to be one book where you can start with issue one. Issue, the, his, the hero is a kid, but I think the end. Uh, he's in, dead. In, Invincible. Really. There, there might be Invincible. Invincible no, actually but, was the first thing I thought of. It's yeah, such an we, obvious answer, yeah. but you do see teenager impetuous kid who gets the powers yeah. and then he turns you know he he's getting more and more mature and yeah. dealing with things as it goes on but, yeah the problem is that a lot of these books that we're talking about are kind of are are, are issue based and drawn out of a large period of time I there's guess. not one like graphic novel that is focusing on the uh, well, there uh, might be yeah, there that, be. we yeah. can't think of it now so there's lots out that's there. a good question though you keep thinking of those ideas though Matt and if but, someone knows of one then yeah. get to well, that fanboy you know what to do alright next one Hey everyone, uh, this message is for Josh. Um, I was reading through the seventh volume of Fables, and the last part of it is a, a story in um, 
that happens in the homelands. And it's, I always get bored with those stories. I was curious if you ever liked Willingham's writing in those, you know, homeland war stories, or if you, you know, if you just skip over them or what. I was just kind of curious. All right, keep up the good work, guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, I, I don't get calls for myself in real life. So <laughs> I want to thank you for that. Um, so, Josh? My voicemail is just an empty. I can give you my number. You no have no call. messages. <laughs> I just check all day. The iPhone, there's nothing. Yeah, it's just... You got your fancy iPhone for the visual voicemail. You can, yeah. nothing. I get one from him every once in a while. <laughs> Mostly texts. Yeah. Anyway, so the question... No, those are my favorite stories. <laughs> really? Uh, the Homeland stories are like the... Tra- actually, I don't remember what the seventh volume was because well, I was on issues by then. Back it up and explain first what Fables is and, and what, what the difference between the Homeland story and a regular Fables story. Connor is what we like to call the corral master. <laughs> I don't know if we do call him that. But uh, uh, Fables, uh, Vertigo book by Bill Willingham. Uh, I don't think we've done a show on it. No, wow, not. it's a book we haven't done a show on, so yeah, we got a, that going for us. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And all the fables have come to Earth to escape uh, the, the adversary who's taken over the homelands. So the homelands is sort of the mystical land where all of the fables... And these are, these are, the characters these are like from stories. Snow White and Goldilocks right. and the Big Bad Wolf and, and people like that. So back, Little boy in, Blue. back in the homelands is where it's been taken over by evil people. Adversary. Right. They, Gargamel? That's, that's the, is it called the adversary? He is. Yeah, yeah, in the beginning. Sense. I mean, okay, we know that was the villain in X Men. We know exactly. who it is now, okay. but we we didn't know that. It's Gargamel. Um, yeah. That'd be oh, wow. awesome. That's, that'd that'd be, that would be awesome. He really got his shit together after the Smurfs, <laughs> because for a long time he he couldn't do anything about those Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were this big and too much for him. The cat was laughing at it. Well, there was, it was 14 no good. million Smurfs. Where um, <laughs> so the Homelands and one woman. There's a trade. I believe it's the sixth volume. Called the Homelands, where isn't that what the, the big war? It all leads up to this big war, right? Well, the big war is happening now, so no, that trade is not that. But what you do is you find out, I don't know what you I find out Boy Blue, uh, what his deal was. Oh, there was a Boy Blue. I was yeah, totally no. fucking around. Boy okay. Blue's in it. No. Okay. Oh. And and you find out that he was a badass, and so he goes back to the Homelands and, and was fights. He a smurf? Uh, no, Smurfy. No. So, but, but, you, but like you like those. them. You like uh, them the more. Homelands is the best story so far. Now, when they go back there and they they talk about the stuff that's going, I like it because for me, Bill Willingham is telling a lot of different stories all at the same time, and they're all working concurrently. And for a long, he spends a long time with the fables in the Mundy world, the mundane world where we live. The Muggles. Uh, Earth Prime, as it were. Uh, um, oh. And and <laughs> I love you have jokes. the Harry Potter joke books. <laughs> um, <laughs> So don't be like, you have, like, the giant case of them. I know I do. That's all right, all right. But so you haven't read them yet. So but you like them. They prop up my no, those mind. are my favorite. Those are my, the Homelands ones I really like a lot. Um, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what your thing is. For me, like, I really like the magical medieval warfare stuff. That's the stuff that touches on, you know, like, literally the Lord of the Rings type of things. Like, the, the dragons and wizards fighting and things like that. And eating. But it's done Always with, eating. it's done with and Willingham's. The and the walking. Willingham is sort of a reverent, very... Uh, Dude, well, I, I really love Willingham's style. I love that, that song. I know, yeah, that, that Lord of the Rings song is awesome. I'm flesh. Uh, so no, I don't have that problem. I've never heard about anybody else who did, but the good thing about that book is that it, it's constantly switching. There'll be a different yeah. story. Like, the, you know, there's a couple of issues that are just about two of the wooden men, uh, you know, the wooden soldiers, and that was just about them, and that was really interesting. Like, he keeps... The camera keeps shifting. Well, He'll be he inside somebody he else's head. So he does, and yeah. he does it really well, for the most part. Cool. So, All right. Sorry. <laughs> To each their own. Next voicemail. Hey, I fanboy. This is Adam from Iowa. And con season is upon us, and cons bring dealers. I was wondering uh, when, what sort of dollar books or quarter books of old series should I look for when I go? I mean, I really enjoy looking through the old stuff, trying to find complete runs, but what would you suggest I look for? Thank you. So that touches upon one of my favorite things about comic book conventions are the dealer uh, booths, and they have what they call quarter bins, or as inflation has gone off through the years, dollar, dollar bins. bins. Sometimes you see 50 cent bins, or sometimes you see they have these like, massive um, discounts. Basically, there are comic book dealers all around the country who have lots of comic books, and they want to get rid of them, so they massively discount them. It's a great opportunity to pick up that missing back issue or missing series that isn't going to be collected in a trade paperback or isn't right. going to be. Um, most recently, um, I started collecting the All-Star Squadron from DC Comics, which was uh, written by Roy Thomas and uh, was an early 80s uh, series that focused on the golden age the ca- characters that are in the Justice Society of America right. now um, brilliant I, f- I forgot a ton of them um, I'm going to be uh, doing a Defenders run oh, nice. uh, the old Marvel group the, you know Doctor Strange Dude, this and... is a thing for you? yeah yeah well 
I didn't know. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> You're like, they're hiding this from us? No, like, I'm like not you're... hiding it. I've, I've been fairly apparent. Yeah, I, yeah. I've never seen, I've been to every con with you for the last five years. I've never seen you do this. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> Adam should have, I didn't remember his name. But there. Yeah. Adam should have told us what he likes. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's hard to recommend for I mean, you without knowing the, what the, you th- the thing about quarter bin diving is that you're not going to, you're going to find a combination of things that have been released in the past two years. Like yeah, a lot of like stock. The stuff that they bought too much of. If you missed 52, stuff. that's a great way to catch up on 52 and issues. That's You're going to find a lot of stuff in the 90s. A lot of the crap. This, this, the, uh, the speculation boom. And stuff. you're honestly not, you're going to find some stuff sporadic and not as much as you used to, but 70s and 80s stuff that nobody cares about. To me, that's the real gold for me. When I was a kid, I would yeah. go and do that. I yeah. would buy, um, it was quarter, it was quarter bins. Quarter bins, yeah. 80s or 90s. Um, I bought like a stack of, I think it was Roy Thomas also, the Invaders books. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like yeah. A, a thick stack and then the yeah. thick stack of the same era JLA books. Yeah. And, like that would just go take them home and I'd have reading for, you know, months. And yeah. That was, you can just go there and just, you you don't even know what to look. Suddenly you find, oh, there's this series I've heard about and never seen. Here's all the look, issues. Look for, for mm-hmm. look for Jim Starlin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, look for, for creators. Look for, yeah. like, literally go back. If you look at some of the stuff that we've done in shows, mm-hmm. like, you know, look for, like, the Infinity Gauntlet or yeah. look for... Oh, those probably aren't. Really. Well, yeah, those probably aren't. Those, right, probably, well, yeah, those, but, those are collected. But, but that's a good point. You but you can find the, the, the issues that cr- that were part of that yeah. crossover. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, you can, can find... find yeah. You can find really good runs of... I mean, like, I love late 80s Marvel comics. Yeah. yeah. So like like if you West find Coast a run Avengers. of West Coast Avengers yeah. or run of, of 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 Captain America from that time, yeah. the last thing I back issue dived for was I got all the Exterminators. I was yeah. looking for all of those. Um, well, oh, Exterminators, the Vertigo run, not yeah. the, not the X book in the eighties. Yeah, no, no, the, I don't that know. That would That was a good book with Artie. The Arty point and about Leach. Jim Starlin though, if, if there's a creator you've heard a lot of but never read anything of, mm-hmm. just go sample some. I you found know, hey, it's uh, Herb Trump. I found I found Bendis's only DC work in a quarter bin. Yeah. It was a, a Batman story in a, in a collection in an anthology. It was, so you can find a lot of really cool stuff, and also you can find some wacky, screwed up stuff too. Like I found V V the V series, the v series from the comics, the science fiction miniseries of NBC. They did a comic version of it. You can find a lot of wacky stuff, so it's fun. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, all right. Next time, tell us what you like. Yes. Yes, that please. Help. That helps. That is always helpful. So when you call and ask for recommendations, we need some background info. Yes. So before we get to our next voicemail, we've got a word from our sponsors. The following message is brought to you by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? You've been drinking tonight. Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested. This episode is also brought to you by GoDaddy. You can get web hosting from GoDaddy that includes 99.9% uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to Hosting Connection, the place to install over 33 applications, sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. GoDaddy's also st- recently started registering .ca domain names. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. So head over to GoDaddy.com and use coupon code IFANBOY to get 10% off your purchase. And Netflix. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 DVD titles online, including lots of Blu-ray titles, with free shipping both ways to your home. Sure, they've had some problems recently, but everything's back to normal, so it's okay. They have over 40 shipping centers, and almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. And plans start from $4.99 and up. And as a new member, you can get a no-risk, two-week free trial. So check it out at www.netflix.com forward slash ifanboy. Don't forget the www when using the URL. That's www.netflix.com forward slash ifanboy. Well, I hope you enjoyed the words from sponsors. Please support them. Anyway, I believe we have more. We do. All right. Hey, fanboy, it's Luke from Denver. Uh, I am reading through my Strangers in Paradise trades right now, and I have a question about who the hell are Molly and Pooh, and what does it have to do with anything? It kind of feels like the um, pirate comic from Watchmen, but for Strangers in Paradise. So if any of you guys have read it, um, what, what the hell is it? Thanks. <laughs> I think the pirate, uh, it's, it's the pirate observation is apt. Sort of. Well, you could read it without. Yeah, well, before we get to Strangers in Paradise by Terry Moore, um, a series that's concluded that ran a very long period of time uh, following the characters of Francine Cachou and their relationship. Um, early in the run, um, as opposed to coming out with a regular issue, he came out with an issue entitled Molly and Pooh. That was a. Had nothing to do with poop. <laughs> that was a story that had nothing to do with the Strangers in Paradise story. Um, in fact, was it early because I read early. the first four trades. It wasn't any of those because trades. it's not included in the trades because it doesn't because it literally doesn't so matter. So it must not yeah. matter. That's your but answer. there would be every once in a while there would be whole issues. About no, there were only this. there were only two. Really? Yeah, there were only two. Yeah. Boy, they really they really stuck. With but what, what happened was that is that there was a character in Strangers of Paradise, uh, Molly, who was uh, who she dated Francine's brother, I think. 
and um, she was a writer and she was in an unhappy marriage and she she expressed her unhappiness in her marriage through writing this story, which was actually a Jack the Ripper kind of story about a, a woman who killed people. And and then she ended up killing her husband. And, and that's I remember how being very annoyed by those issues well, because the story didn't go any further. You were like, what, what, what is this? And it was a different style. Yeah, it was, it was a prose. It yeah. was totally prose and just illustrated. The thing is, is that the diehards... Mm -hmm. Loved it. No, right. But yeah. There's always so you're a diehard. Diehard. Well, yeah, and I, I give or take it. Yeah, yeah no, but, but there are people who like wanted more. Those are the people who, yeah. who read Paradise. He too. loves. Yeah, the I normal. read Paradise too. I never read Paradise. I didn't get too. it. Oh, it's awesome, Kixie. He loves the normal name and the weird name. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't have to read it. You could skip it. You'd be totally fine. It's it's it's. I mean, it's it's fun. It's, it's a different. Like it. It's it's a different skill he's got going on. The it may be fun, but it's not. You don't need to read it. You don't. No, not at all. I mean, it's a it's a very tenuous connection at best. You should so. read the after not even the trade paperbacks, and they're really not necessary. I don't know what tenuous means. Read the pirate. No, yeah. Was that right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. And um, the pirate part, referring to the Watchmen, there's a story of the pirate part. That and, Connor won't read. And then the reason why, because the pirate part actually is the story of Watchmen. Connor but, won't read it. Yeah, so anyway. It's not necessary. It doesn't, you don't do everything that's necessary. Only it's, it's necessary sprinkles things. On the... I drink because it's necessary to keep my fluid level high. But he, and he only drinks water that's been desalinated himself. Well, yes. He, go is, get, he gets it from the ocean. This is oh. water, definitely. Comic books. <laughs> science. Sometimes science is, is important. It is. <laughs> All right. Next voicemail. Science Heroes. Hi, this is Sam from Wisconsin, and I have a question for you guys on Married Superheroes. Uh, lately, I've been getting the vibe from you guys that you don't like heroes to be married. Uh, I take examples to this of a couple uh, weeks ago on the podcast, on the video podcast, that you said you would no longer, you wouldn't want Superman married to Lois Lane, and you would try to make uh, Daredevil no uh, single again, and that you guys didn't like uh, Peter being married to Mary Jane. So my question was, is was it with you guys and uh, Mary superheroes? All right, uh, thanks very much, and love the show. Bye. First of all, Daredevil's marriage to Mila has done nothing but drag that book yes. down into the depths of de See, horribleness. What we need to clarify is. Analyzing one relationship is not a condemnation of marriage as an institution. Right. Okay. I don't remember making a proclamation on this for all of us. Right. Yeah. No. That's the other thing. We all have independent thing. Um, I think we all agree that the Daredevil marriage to Mila has been a drag because of, as opposed to throwing the book at Daredevil, they threw the book at Mila. Yeah. As she became the Kelly Taylor of Daredevil, and just like everything has happened to her, and it's been really boring. Is that and, a 90210? It was a 90210 reference because okay. she got shot. I don't know what that. Means. I think. I think. Look it up. Most. I mean, Daredevil <laughs> Mila is a special case. I mean, Superman Lois. Superman Lois is also a special case because you could argue. I could hear an argument either did way. They not, didn't they get married? Yeah, they're yeah, married. They've been married. Yeah, a we, were saying, right. we were saying they should break up. Remember on the Texilla set? We said no. they should break yeah, up. Yeah, remember that Texilla yeah. show we did? I said that I would marry Mitchell Hundred from Ex Machina. I said I would yeah. have him get married. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, um, there's, there's characters I like that. Um, you know, like I like some characters that are married. I think they make really good ones. I like that Wally West is married. I don't like his kids. Right. Yeah. But I like his I like marriage. The, I now like we're gonna get a voicemail about why do we hate kids children? Because right, yeah. right, exactly. No, we just don't like those children. Um, Have you seen the Superman and Lois takes away a dynamic from the relationship. Yeah, you, lose, you lose the love triangle, which is so important to the dynamic of Clark does she lo she loves Superman but not Clark, but Clark is Superman. Like, that's the whole that's like right. integral to Superman. It's a love triangle with two people. Yeah. Does that happen? Um and I love Jessica Jones being married to Luke Cage. Yeah, exactly. It's too, too bad they're That's both scrolls. I, I loved, um, I, I loved Peter and Mary Jane when it was done right, when it was done well. I didn't See, think they had to be broken up. I didn't mind that. Yeah, I, I think, liked I think, that because when I too. first when I first started reading Amazing Spider-Man, they were married. It was right. the late yeah, That's 80s. what you knew. Yeah. Right. See, I mean, not me. I read. A, I started reading them in the middle. He read it in the sixties, which was really a feat. Yeah, he's older than he. No, was. but it's um, it's some marriages work. Fantastic Four. They have to be married. I yes. was very happy when Scott and Jean Grey got married, and it got boring after that immediately. See? But because I would have like, kept them. I would have like kept them regular, married, like a regular marriage. And again, <laughs> it's it's all about. I'm very happily married. It's all about exciting fiction. Uh huh. And usually, My exciting, wife exciting fiction show. doesn't come from. <laughs> I can say Just it. Take it off. Take the ring off. <laughs> all right, yeah. all right, all right. Exciting fiction usually comes from when you've got romantic tension, and and yes. and, and, and in fiction setting, there's not much romantic tension in a marriage. Correct. I can't speak for reality, but I will speak I like, for fiction. I like uh, Jay, the Flash. Jay Garrick. Oh, yeah, yeah he's married. Yeah. He's got a nice wife. Yeah, he does. She's very nice. She takes and care Barry of and the Irish were yeah, fine. Yeah. So Flashes, apparently, can be Flashes are stand-up guys. I fanboy have decided collectively that Flashes should be married. Yeah. Except for Bart. Because well, he's, he's dead. Well, he's a little young, and he's dead. Well, right, yeah. but... All right. His 20s got a couple him forward. A couple more. Let's get through them. Hey, guys. This is Craig from Kansas. Um, I was just watching the uh, the video podcast from the other day about understanding comics, and uh, 
uh, it, it occurred to me, I remember seeing a, an interview uh, with Scott McCloud that was done on the DVD extras for the movie Unbreakable by M. Night Shyamalan. And uh, that occurred to me something. I'd, I'd rewatched that movie the other day. Uh, I watched it when it originally came out, but kind of forgotten about it. And I found it the other day uh, and rewatched it. And I, I didn't realize, you know, how much it was actually based on comics. And uh, in the extras, they actually interview a whole host of different people, uh, some pretty big names in there, uh, when they were talking about uh, the inspiration for the movie. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to see if uh, you, what you guys thought about that movie. Uh, it came out long enough ago before all the podcasting and everything, so uh, never really heard you talk about it. We don't, to, we, don't have, we don't have to worry about spoilers then. No, no spoilers. No uh, spoilers. No, I mean, no, no, no. Don't worry about spoilers. Mr. Glass. <laughs> um, Unbreakable was a superhero movie. It was totally a superhero. I mean, it's a straight up superhero movie without costumes. It's basically heroes. I yeah. didn't know that and going heroes. into it. Oh. But in like in it, I was like, oh, didn't Alex Ross do the? Yeah, Alex Ross did it? a lot of the conceptual yeah. art. Yeah. yeah. I I went into that movie and the guys who ran my comic shop were there as well as half the comic shop. Like it, it, we all knew. Like it, we didn't plan it. It yeah. was just like the weird mm-hmm. convolutes of comic nerds. And it was uh, funny. No, it was, but, yeah, it was a I liked that movie. movie. It was the only M Night Shyamalan movie. Movie I like. To really? be honest with you. Yeah, I didn't yeah. like that movie. I did. In, I in retrospect, lot, yeah. I liked it less. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I own it. Yeah, it's so, really good. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay. Remember when he used to be good at movies? No. He's still good at movies. No. no. Sam Jackson. Every movie. His new his new movie is like from the person who, from the director who brought you the Sixth Sense, and I was like, yeah. you're going way back for that. Not, they're not mentioning they're not mentioning the Lady in the Water. No. They don't bring that up. All right. Here's our last one. Hey, uh, fanboys, this is uh, Will Lund from Portland, Oregon. And Ron, it's Oregon, not Oregon. Uh, but I didn't call for that. I just called. Uh, I just watched the uh, Sin City episode. Great episode, guys. And I wanted to ask you guys if any of you have read Ronin, uh, Ronin the series he did before The Dark Knight Returns. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I want to hear what you have to say. All right, take it easy, guys. I've had Ronin on my bookshelf for like three years now, mm-hmm. and I just can't bring myself to read it. I have no idea why. I bought it from a like a used bookstore. Yeah. You know, like one of those like old. They have yeah. I was like, oh, Frank Miller, yeah. and I bought it and I read it. Yeah. I, it was eight years yeah. more. I, I have no recollection to what it was. I read it in college. I couldn't tell you what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it because it was like one of those like like I think I should own this. Yeah, that's and, why I bought and, it. And and I've sat down to read it like three times. And I'm just. Like, no, I just, I, I, I remember reading it. I can remember, actually remember reading it. I just can't yeah. remember what was on the page. Like, my memory is just a bunch of white pages. It was kind of futuristic samurai kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, it was, yeah. I remember liking it at the time. Yeah. It was very much, it was early, it was, it was pre-Dark Knight and post-Daredevil, and it was the beginning of his style, of his look. It's the next uh, yeah. Absolute Edition, so. Oh, well, maybe we'll, we'll read it then and we'll rave yeah. about it, so. Or not. So. <laughs> I'm not promising anything. <laughs> so that was a great batch of voicemails. Thank you, everybody, for calling in. If you want to call in and get on our next voicemail show, you can call us at one eight 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 fanboys That's one eight 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 three two six two six nine seven. And if you don't want to call and talk to us, or uh, if you're from Oregon. 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 Uh, you can he corrected us, you without you even getting it wrong. I know. <laughs> you can send us an email at contact at ifanboy.com. And if you've, uh, you should go to ifanboy.com. It's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I'm biased, but it's awesome. It's like, if you're at work and you're like done watching the videos and stuff and you're like, I don't know what to do, go to ifanboy.com. <laughs> or you can go to revision3.com forward slash ifanboy. Weird. To watch and more videos. you can watch more of our weekly videos as well as the iFanboy minis that come out every day, Monday There's through Friday. There's forums there too. Those are awesome also. Yeah. So revision3.com forward slash ifanboy. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> buy things anymore. <laughs> I haven't bought a new item of clothing in a long time. A long time. Alright. I can blot myself. You have hair bits. Okay, I'm sure I just got my hair cut. No, no, no. Right. Oh, that one's stuck on there like... Blue. Nobody's gonna see it. It's not high definition. Oh. It is. <laughs>
Professor's all right. Yeah. One sec, Mom, one sec. Oh, one sec, Mom, one sec. Sorry, Mom, yeah. Okay, thanks, Mom, yeah. I'll get back to studying. I'll be fine, I promise. All right, love you, Mom. Bye. So, that was my mom. She just called me during a party I'm throwing at my apartment, and uh, she had no idea. She thinks I'm studying. Those of you with overprotective moms, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Get the jawbone, it's convenient. People in the party don't even realize you're wearing it sometimes. And uh, it's perfect, the noise assassin makes mom have no idea what's going on in the background. I'm AJ Vaynerchuk, this is my Vision 3 Back to School Intern Survival Guide, brought to you by Jawbone.